two high-ranking Republicans want to take Ken Paxton's place as attorney general. And the first one in the race will be at least somewhat familiar to most Texans, Land Commissioner George P. Bush. Well, Commissioner, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. First off, what inspired you to want to run for attorney general? Well, our current attorney general is under criminal indictment, and this role requires actually enforcing laws in our state and also pushing it back against the federal overreach that we're seeing in the White House. Uh, when we initially saw an investigation ranging from allegations involving bribery to corruption, I felt like I could offer something to the people of Texas. Uh, I've been serving as land commissioner, and I've won successfully in defending Texas values in the courthouse. Uh, I am a lawyer and ready to get this uh, battle started against the Biden administration. Next week, in fact, I'll be announcing a lawsuit holding deadbeat bureaucrats responsible for their lack of securing our border uh, in South Texas. And so the governor just announced yesterday that Texas will step forward and finish the Trump wall. Uh, the state lands will be contributed to part of that process. So to answer your question, I want to roll up my sleeves and work hard for Texans and, and defend our values. We already have two challengers on the Republican side. So what do you think this race is going to look like over these next nine months until the primary and then through next November? Well, I'm going to run this campaign just like I did the first time around in 2014, retail style, grassroots, getting down to every single community throughout the state of Texas. Um, the first time around, I visited over 240 of our 254 counties. I look forward to engaging in those discussions with Republicans throughout the state and reminding them of my track record in the military, in the private sector as an attorney, and also as the land commissioner. Uh, I'm not going to really focus on the negative attacks. I think right now it, it makes sense for offering solutions and ideas to Texans because they are scared, especially in border areas where we saw 200,000 apprehensions this past month alone. They see a federal government that's not concerned about Texas values or our economy. And so I'm going to be talking about what we can do at the attorney general's office to improve it, make it more efficient, just like I did at the land office, restore accountability and integrity. And I think we're going to win in the end. Well, there are two aspects to being attorney general. There's the logistical side and simply running a large public office. And then there's the policy side. So let's focus on the policy side first. You mentioned the border. What would be some of the other big issues you would take on? Absolutely. Well, law enforcement is under attack in our state. This past legislative session uh, alone, we've heard an estimate ranging between 150 to 180 legislative items that would have stripped legal authority from our law enforcement officials here in Texas. And the defund the police movement happens to be the narrative behind this push. Um, Texans aren't going to stand for this movement, not now or not ever. And so I think speaking to law enforcement issues um, rallying behind the Chad Walker bill was something that I did there during this legislative session. That would be installing bullet-resistant windshields on our state troopers and encouraging that at the local and county level as well, where Trooper Chad Walker died in the line of duty last year as he was pulling over an individual. Third, I would want to take on human trafficking. So in addition to securing border and backing the thin blue line, we got to take on the fastest growing crime in our state. Human trafficking involves the sale of young women increasingly online and digitally. And this is unacceptable, where Texas now is close to surpassing California in terms of total reported cases. Uh, this is an area where the attorney general can work with local DAs to prosecute these cases, not only on an individual basis against Johns and pimps and perps, but also taking on seasoned criminal networks related to the illegal immigration issue that we're talking about, but also domestic grooming that's occurring in the state of Texas. So I would want to shine a light on this stand shoulder to shoulder with human trafficking survivors, just like I did during the legislative session, helping pass legislation and defending that in the courthouse to take on sexually oriented businesses and the sex trade in Texas. Uh, finally, you know, this is an interesting agency because we have 4,200 full-time employees, a budget of about 660 million. I think we can do a lot more with two thirds of that being allocated to child alimony collection, alimony payments in Texas. We can use technology of today to better position resources so we can take on human trafficking, uh, back our voter integrity measures that we're going to pass in a special session. At least I'm confident we will do so. And taking on some of the other complex challenges that investigators can, can work on regarding the complex challenges that the state faces. So those are the four major areas that I'm going to campaign on and, and talk about uh, throughout the state. More with George P. Bush after the break. As the only member of his political family to support former President Trump, I'll ask him about how much he wants that endorsement.